if it just continues in the do 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 then i think i'm gonna like just try and quickly pack my bags and head back home and see what to do that side Hi Belibis, welcome to Community Living with your girl Malebo. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and if you're stopping back by and continuously supporting the channel, you know the jungle by now, so sing along with us. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So thank you, thank you, thank you to each and everyone that's been liking, commenting and sharing. You know the deal, you know the deal. Today's topic is about whether or not it's still worth it to basically disrupt your life wherever you are and then pack up and come to China. Is it still worth it to do that? right so that's what we're going to be discussing but before we start as you guys know we always start off in prayer because prayer is quite important giving thanks unto you messiah for your good giving thanks for your love giving thanks for each and everything that you um have done and that you're still going to do in our lives messiah but as we're about to start this episode we ask that may you be with us from start to finish messiah may you bless the person that is joined baba they probably want to get an answer messiah and get some form of enlightenment is to the current situation within china and whether or not it is still something that is worth it for them and in which context should they do it and how they should go about it we thank you papa for the session may they be enlightened through it and for their lives may you bless them in their journey in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ amen so that is the prayer okay guys i actually want to undo <laughs> this hairstyle all right um so yes i did a quick change in terms of hairdo <laughs> so never mind the new quick hair change so we are going to be answering the question of whether or not it's still worth it to pick up your life and basically come to china there are various scenarios that i'm going to lay forth for you just so that you can be able to best answer this question for yourself with more information at your disposal right so firstly this is not necessarily a disclaimer but the esl industry is evolving and is changing beyond what anyone can predict at this point and if you are in the process of applying or if you maybe have documents you probably noticed that it's not easy to find a job within china right so there are various reasons behind that which we're not necessarily gonna go over in today's channel because a majority of them is theorizing right and from what we are observing from within and what other people are saying and what the consensus that we are reaching is that it is quite difficult to find a job at the current moment especially as a black south african so we cannot speak to other races and we cannot speak to other nationalities but as a black south african it is quite difficult to find a job within china i also saw a video of someone in south korea who's saying it's also starting to become difficult to find a job within south korea as well so there are less and less people that are getting employed there are people that have had their documents ready for quite some time but unfortunately we're not seeing the um, same rate of absorption basically from the market as they used to be in the past so obviously then there are multiple factors the other factors could be like there are a lot more people now willing to do this so meaning there's like a surplus of black south africans trying to come to both china and south korea but as i mentioned i'm not going to theorize on what are the reasons so what i would like to speak about is is it worth worth it to uh basically pack everything and come this side right so the question is in the question can be answered in multiple folds uh, or in multiple yeah I, I guess i have to unpack it slightly for me it depends who you are and it's based on multiple factors as mentioned right so i'm gonna create scenarios so if you're someone that is unemployed yes it's still worth it for you to be to come to china to try and come to china if you are someone that is working it depends on your occupation right if you are a permanent teacher right you can try and still come it might still be worth it for you it might still be keyword might 
right might still be uh, worth it for you because if china doesn't work out there are multiple other countries there's saudi arabia there's the uae where professional teachers can go to these countries and then you'd have a head exposure with the esl industry so you now know whether or not you you want to go into the industry you know a bit more so that's uh, the second half so firstly is unemployed people definitely try teachers that are permanent or temporary um, teachers people that are teachers by profession or people that also have a pgce and are now professional teachers definitely try then there's a third group where you don't have a pgce maybe you're not planning on getting a pgce and you are employed in south africa especially if you are permanently employed right if you're permanently employed and you heard that okay people are getting 50k 60k and so forth should you still uproot your life and come this side for me that particular group especially if you're earning anything more than i'd say anything more than 25k i wouldn't advise you to come this side right especially if you're permanently employed if you're temporarily employed and your contract ends or whatever the case might be or you want to uh, to travel then yes you might uh, you might want to explore this option but for people that are permanently employed definitely do not recommend at all for that particular group and what are the reason that i wouldn't recommend it for this particular group is that the salaries are becoming lower and lower and lower right if you are unemployed zero whatever they offer this side is better than zero right and if you are a teacher you will definitely get paid more than what you earn in south africa you will definitely get paid more than what you earn in south africa that is a fact if you are if they're offering you things that are less than what you're getting paid in south africa just refuse right there will be someone that's willing to give you a better offer because of your experience they do pay for high-end skills so teaching as a profession is starting to become a high-end skill versus the esl industry which is just having a tefl certificate plus any other degree and then the people that don't have like a pgce or that are not professional teachers their salaries are lower and lower and are getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, and lower, and lower, and lower by the day by the day and after that okay so there's that right so you can get a pgce that is not a problem then there's a second thing that influences this group of people or that's going to affect this group of people actually it does affect everyone that's in china but i think because you have uprooted your life and you're earning a certain amount of money and maybe your career progression is not clear cut as well then it might be more of an inconvenience for this group than anybody else but it's an inconvenience for everybody that's in china so being in china is like being on shaky ground being in the esl industry especially within china at the moment is like being on shaky ground so there are a lot of south africans for various reasons as i said we're not going to go into the theorizing part that have been laid off in a minute's notice month and next week whatever so you come here and then during probation they decide no we're not gonna hire you or you have passed probation and then there are teachers from other nationalities that start uh, to come through they prefer those teachers then they take them versus you right so there's been a lot of issues around that topic where teachers came here they were teaching for a month or two sometimes they even pass their probation or they're doing their work and they're working diligently and so forth then on their side they are saying there's there was no problem work wise but then they got you know laid off still so there's the laying off part so you could get laid off within a minute's notice you might not pass probation that's another thing then the third thing is basically some schools do some illegal things today there was a person who just found out that his school is not paying his tax so the school said okay we are going to give you a salary after tax so you won't you won't get paid like a full salary then you know you go and pay your own tax so we'll pay you x amount of we'll give you x amount of money after tax and then we will take care of the tax component and then when he then did his own digging he found out that the school is actually not paying his tax but whose problem is it going to be is it going to be the school's problem no 
that's gonna be on him then the next thing is social insurance as well as medical aid so there's another lady who today just found out that his, her school was paying for travel insurance versus medical insurance and she was sick she was hospitalized she paid out of pocket being hospitalized in china is quite expensive or getting medical assistance in china is quite expensive so you are hospitalized or whatever the case might be or you're getting medical assistance and you probably have to claim that from your medical insurance right and then she now just found out that you know it's the wrong type of insurance some don't even take out any insurance whatsoever so at least there is some insurance on her side it's just the wrong type but other schools don't even take out that we know about the reparation one which i don't know if i wasn't working for a school that has reparation what i was going to do because there are teachers that don't have that even while they're here and you know reparations is about 500,000 rents right so there are a lot of issues when it comes to how schools can treat you and how schools can do things that are unethical or illegal and there is no way of sort of holding them accountable without going the lawyer route you know so you'd need to and i, I don't know why uh, schools are even doing that right so that is on them but there are enough cases where it's becoming something where it's like okay a raised eyebrow why are there so many schools that are not taking out either medical insurance or taking the right type of insurance or paying your taxes why are schools comfortable with lying to people and why are um, uh, um agents because agents are the ones that are involved sometimes you'd speak directly to the agent and never to the school and why are schools comfortable with maybe the i know so sometimes they can't speak the language you'd find out that the agent is the only person that knows how to speak a bit of english but still the school doesn't want to like you know interact with you they only interact with the um, with the agent and it's a bit of a problem so those are some of the issues that i feel like some of the worst kind of problems that you can encounter and i'm not even you know encapsulating all of the issues that you might encounter these are some of the issues i've never like experienced those issues because um with a company that's sort of international and some of these issues aren't there but i also have my own issues which because i'm still employed with the same company i cannot go into some of these issues i will not disclose i will not shoot my f <laughs> myself in the foot by telling you some of the issues that i have encountered they're not major issues actually they might be slightly major but i'm rolling with the punches at this point and you know i'm not letting it deter me in terms of um being here right so i'm the one that chose to be here and i'm happy with my decision to an extent when it comes to certain things but i will see how next year is going to be if it just continues in the do 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 then i think i'm gonna like just try and quickly pack my bags and head back home and see what to do that side you know because at the end of the day as much as home might not be the best place to be right now it is still like the best place to be mentally so here you're dealing with mental health issues solitude and then you're dealing with these other issues the way schools are doing funny things and no one is there to like help you in the right way yes there are some groups where there are people that are knowledgeable that will tell you where to go but i'm just wondering about the lawyer thing for example like now i need to look for a lawyer that's x amount of money which i did not budget to have because i didn't think my school was gonna do things that are illegal you know so things like that so just be wary of such things as you prepare to come this side that there might be some funniness in how things are done and yeah like if god blesses you with a great school with good ethics then we thank him but if not that and you're involved in some scandal be mentally prepared for it i think that's what i want people to understand or take away from this video the mental preparation for things to go as low as you've ever been like if you believe you've been low you, you have reached like a low point in life like lower than that and then like that might be your experience in china 
right so this is not to glamorize or this is not to also say that you can't have a good life the people that have great lives while they're in china and they're really enjoying themselves here and they're people that are miserable as well right and they're having or miserable not because you know it's of their own doing but because of the circumstances that they found themselves in and how things panned out as well so just be wary as you go on with this process so this is the non glamorized version the unfiltered truth about coming to china and make an informed decision with this information as to whether or not this is something that you are ready to deal with you know yourself best you know what you can handle you know what you can tolerate and so forth and with this information hopefully it helps you to decide what you need to do in the future and what kind of decisions you need to make when it comes to whether or not you should come to china okay so that's it bolavis as mentioned that this video was for was to help you to make the decision and i hope it helped you to or in or it informed you a bit more about some of the things that you need to mentally prepare yourself for before you know jetting off to this side which is not a bad place but as mentioned just mental preparedness will definitely do you justice because here in china because of just the weirdness that you're experiencing so yeah i hope that helps you make an informed decision bolavis and may god bless you and bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you bolavis mm, love you love you and he loves you more <laughs>